Hello, it's me Samantha and today I'm going to show how I do the afghan stitch. As with everything in crochet, you're going to begin with a chain stitch. So, when I begin my to begin my chain, I fold my yarn into the shape of a pretzel. I'm sure we all know what a little pretzel looks like. So, we're just going to fold that. You got that one little loop, and then you put another little loop behind that. And just fold those yarn over until it looks like a little pretzel. So you know, I call that my little pretzel. Then I'm going to insert my hook into that loop of the pretzel, and then I pull that through, and then just tighten that. And then I have this, t this, you know, this little tail that's hanging, and then the rest of the the yarn that's connected to the skein of yarn that I'm I'm working with, I can pull that and tighten it, tighten it or loosen it however, you know, however I want to. And um, I am left handed so everything you see is going to be done left handed but if you're right handed then just do the same thing except you're going to be using your right hand instead of your left hand. And so we have this first loop on our hook and I always say crocheting is about um, doing what's comfortable for you and for me it's comfortable it's comfortable for me to hold my hook this way and I thread my yarn first over my ring finger on my uh, on my right hand and then over my index finger and that's just how I hold my yarn and it gives me a good tension gives me a good hold on my on my yarn and I take my thumb and my middle finger and hold on to the the base of what I'm what I'm working on. So right now I'm just kind of holding on to this tail and the little knot that's at the bottom of this first loop as I crochet. Now when I begin this chain, I'm going to put a loop over that hook and pull that loop through the loop that's already on my hook and that's your first chain. And then that's your second chain and then so on and so forth. That's the third chain. And for this demonstration, we're only going to do six chains. And so that's six. And when you look at the front of your chain, I say it, it looks just like a braid. So when I when I start my Afghan stitch, I like to stitch and you're going to stitch into the chain, but I like to turn it over. And when you look at the back of it, you see the back of the chain and there in the middle, there's this loop. I call it like a little bump that goes down the middle. That's that stitch that I stitch into. Now with the afghan stitch, I call it the afghan stitch. Um, many people are used to hearing the Tunisian stitch or you call it the Tunisian stitch. So when you hear me say afghan stitch, that is the very same thing. I just I learned it when I learned it it was it was called afghan stitch. That's just how I learned it. and I'm I'm just used to saying the afghan stitch but it's all the same thing now this first loop on your hook is your first stitch so when you're going to stitch into your chain you're going to skip that first chain this is the first chain you're going to skip that and you're going to skip you're going to stitch into the second chain right into that that bump that I talked about that's in the middle and you're going to pull a loop through that so that's two stitches on your hook and then into the next stitch that's three and you're going to stitch into every stitch until you get to the end that's three and that's four and this is five and the last one is six mm -mm, the last one sometimes that last one is a little tight and pull that through. So now you have six stitches on your hook. And you're going to work those stitches off. First you're just going to pull a loop through one stitch and then now you have that loop and then the rest of the stitches on your hook. So now you're going to have to pull two loops off at one time to work the rest of them off. That's the third one. That's four, five, and for your total of six because we started off with those six chains pull out some more yarn and that's your your first row and then the second row you're going to stitch 
as you look at this this first row you'll see these vertical stitches okay on every row the beginning that first loop is your first stitch so now you're gonna stitch into that second vertical stitch and that's two then three four five and six and then you're gonna work these stitches off just like you did that first row first work off one loop and then two until you get to the end oops so I'm gonna put that back on my hook and put that two that makes four five and six and that's your second row and this is your third row total of six stitches on my hook and work them off the very same way three four five and six and that's three rows and now we're going to do one more row for this demonstration we'll do four rows one two three four five and six uh, don't you hate it when the yarn comes out of the center of the skein like that you gotta kinda straighten that out a little bit now as you can see it does curl and that's something many of us hate I know I hate it uh, a lot of people ask how do you stop the curling some people say they, when they finish the project, they'll put a border around whatever it is they're making, and that makes it lay flat. Some people say that the larger the hook you use, the less it curls. But no matter what I do, it still curls. But what I like to do is I use a steam iron, and I, I press it with that steam iron using lots of steam. You know those irons that have that, that button that you press to get that extra burst of steam so I just press it and I use lots of steam and that just it makes it lay flat and it makes the yarn very soft now these are two um, swatches that I did earlier and I pressed them when I was done and this is after I steam it and it, and it just lays nice and flat and it makes the yarn I, I don't care what yarn, what brand of yarn you're using how soft it is when you press it with that steam iron it makes it even softer so I like that so that's what I do now when you look at these these rows you see we did four rows now when you look at the first three rows and you look at this fourth row you can see a difference you see those three rows uh, they're nice and neat and the the spaces are you don't see any spaces in between but when you look on this fourth row you see that they have those spaces in between that that fourth row looks different but now if we were to do a fifth row then that would fill in just like these other ones did but since this is our last row we're not going to do another row but we're going to slip stitch in each stitch all the way across and that will fill that out so we're going to insert the hook in that stitch just like we would if we were doing another row and we'd pull that loop through but we would also pull that loop through the stitch that's on my hook and see how that fills that out and then you're just going to do that all the way across in each stitch and that's how you finish off your last row and then into that last stitch and then you're just going to cut that and fasten it off now my tails that I have left over I turn it to the back and I uh, I just take my hook and I just pull those little tails through and I just weave it in just weave it into the the back of the the afghan or a scarf or whatever I'm making I've already done it to this one I did earlier if you look at that row you might be able to tell a little bit that's that I do it for about six six seven eight stitches at least about six stitches and that's just how I 
get rid of these tails that are hanging from the end. And um, those six chains, now however wide, whatever you're making, however wide that project is, however many, if you're looking at the graph of the pattern, if it's 33 stitches wide, you're going to chain those 33 stitches, just like this scarf I'm working on. This scarf is 33 stitches wide, so when I began it, I started off with a 33 stitch chain, and then I did each row, you know, picking up my colors. I did, like for this project, I did 10 rows of green, then I did 5 rows of white, then 5 of green, and then I started use, following the pattern to make this New York Jets emblem, and just follow the pattern, pick up the right colors at the right time, and that just makes your design or your picture. And this right here, and then I did several more rows of the scarf. And then this right here, I'm beginning, I'm beginning to um, spell out jets. So this is the beginning of my J. So I'm just following a pattern and just doing those stitches just like I did in that little demonstration. But instead of just six stitches across, I'm using 32 stitches. And also I'm also working on this New York Jets New York Giants blanket now this is much bigger of course this is 310 stitches wide and of course a lot of people ask well what kind of hook do I use for that how am I gonna fit all of that on this little short 9 inch afghan hook believe me you can't you have I have this 9 inch Afghan hook and I also have one that's a little bit longer this is about 14 inches so this will help accommodate larger projects I think with with about this one you can fit about a hundred stitches on comfortably but I wouldn't push it any further than that now they also have these hooks that have the hook on one end and then at then there's this uh, cable attached to it and then this stopper at the end this allows you to place a whole lot more stitches on because of this flexible end that that makes it possible to add a whole lot of stitches and then of course the stopper this keeps the 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 stitches on and it won't fall off let you put a whole lot of stitches on at one time but the one I like the best because I mostly make large projects I make a lot of afghans and I love the circular crochet hook. This is my personal preference. And it's just two, it's made of two, two crochet hooks, two long crochet hooks, as you can see. And they're attached in the middle by this, this uh, cable in the middle. And the cable in the middle is what makes it possible to fit hundreds of stitches on at one time. This afghan that I showed you right here, that's exactly... The hook that I'm using for this project. Um, some people get confused when they see the two crochet hooks. They think that you're crocheting with both hooks. You're only crocheting with one end. And then you have the, the cable in the middle is what makes it possible to put all these stitches on. Now this is 310 stitches and as you can see I can push that down even further and still be able to fit on. I know hundreds more if I needed to if I needed to but just depends on how big a project you're working on and then this hook at the opposite end this crochet hook you're not you're not really crocheting with it you're just putting stitches on that hook and as you slide your stitches down further you have the hook on the end and that hook is just what keeps your stitches on and it just keeps them from from falling off so you're not crocheting with both of the crochet hooks you only crocheting with one end and the other end is just to keep the stitches on so just like I did those six stitches in the demonstration in this blanket I did three three hundred and ten stitches and that's that's the end you know that's my three hundred and tenth stitch and as you can see I've worked off a few stitches and now I'm just using this end of the hook to work the rest you know this is what I'm crocheting with I'm working off these stitches and of course you know I'm picking up my next color I come to I work that off 
I also have another video where I show how to how I change colors. And then that's just like the little example I showed with the six stitches, but instead of six stitches, it's 310 stitches. So it just depends on your pattern, the project you're working on. You can make something that's 10 stitches wide, you can make something that's four hundred stitches wide. Just the possibilities are endless. I love the Afghan stitch and if you've never tried it, I hope you come to love it as much as I do. Thank you for watching.